Those past days I've been playing around with Ableton Drift and I must say that I really enjoyed it because it's such a simple and minimalist synthesizer that at the same time sounds really great and with just a few tweaks you can easily come up with some very beautiful sounds. In this video I want to walk you through the individual features of the, of the synth and also show you some more charismatic tweaks you can explore in order to make your sounds more personal. Let's just jump right into it. First of all, hi and welcome to this video. My name is Janis and I like making videos about sound design. So on my channel you can find other videos about making sounds with other Ableton synthesizers because Drift is new. And Drift focuses on a concept called subtractive synthesis. It's also the most traditional concept, which means first we have oscillators, in this case two, and those are our sound generators. So if you deselect oscillators, you don't have any sound. And if you only select one, you have the sound of the first one and if you select the second you have also a second sound so now you can hear this kind of octave that we create. On the left side you can pick different waveforms they just sound differently and you can explore them for yourself. You can change the octave so it's just one octave higher and also you can change the shape which is basically some tool for changing the timbre of a waveform so if I press a note you can see that if I increase this, we get different timbres. And next to it, there's some modulation window, which I'll speak about later when it's about the more unique things of this synthesizer. Now let's check out the second oscillator, because here you can also select a waveform and basically just detune. That means that now they are perfectly in tune. And here you can create some more tension. Actually, it would work better with also like a sawtooth wave very classic and traditional sound. You can also add some noise and also some modulations here again. I'll speak about them after focusing on the basics. Next we get some classic ADSR envelope and this first one is always linked to the oscillators. Here we can shape the sound. So for example if the attack is short the sound is there right away. If I would increase the attack it takes a while for it to get to the highest level. The sustain determines at what level the sound stays for as long as I press the key. So if I would lower this amount you would see that it's actually lower than the highest peak in the beginning and the way from the attack peak to the sustain level is the decay. So if I would increase that you would see that it takes some time to get from the first kind of peak down to the 30% sustain. And if the sustain is at zero we can keep the note pressed, but at some point it will just disappear depending on the decay time. And also you have the release, so it basically means what happens after you release the key. So if this is long, you get some almost reverb type ringing. There's also a second envelope that you can use for some creative purposes and I'll also speak about this in a second. Let's first check out the filter because this is the more crucial part for the beginning. Here you can take away frequency content and subtractive synthesis means you take away frequencies. So right now it's completely open but I, if I decrease it we make the sound duller and you also have two filter types that changes the slope. You can actually see it here. So how strictly it takes away frequencies. And also you have some button for resonance where you can add a little peak and get some of those effects, really interesting. And also you can add a high pass filter which means it's basically the opposite than this low pass filter. And here you basically take away the low frequency content so this way you can make the sound thinner. And usually you also use some modulation for the filter because if I bring this down it sounds a bit static and dull but you can go to this section here where for example you can choose the envelope one we also use for those oscillators to give some motion to the filter because now you can see that by using this envelope the filter get some movement in the beginning so it starts more open and then with the settings of the envelope it actually reaches this point here and that's a classic technique for just using the filter but also making sure it sounds a little more dynamic and not so dull and also the keyboard tracking is a cool option because here you can make the filter react to the type of pitch you play. So if I play a very low note with the keyboard tracking at zero 
it's quite present, but if I put the keyboard tracking to the maximum, it's more dull because it would gradually open up the filter. And it's a kind of musical setting and I usually always use a little bit of it. And these are the very basics of subtractive synthesis that you can perfectly explore with the synthesizer and everything that follows now goes into the direction of modulations but before there's the thing that gives the whole synth its name which is actually called Rift which I want to explain to you. On the right side you can see this mode section and by default it's on poly which is the typical setting for you being able to play different notes at the same time. Here you could play up to 32 notes at the same time which is a bit crazy because you rarely do this unless they ring for a very long time but it's fine for now that means we can play chords so I can play this and we hear three different notes and by default drift is on 7.2 percent so if it's on zero you always get exactly the same kind of response from the, the oscillators so they are perfectly in tune or depending on what you set up here but they will always sound the same and digitally reproduce the exact same frequency and exactly same phase. If you increase the drift there will be variances in the phase and the frequency response so you get this kind of tiny out of tune and unperfect effect. This is something you have to listen carefully to because you can easily go over the top by just putting it to 100% thinking oh this is so amazing but it doesn't really sound that natural anymore. But usually you can find sweet spots so for example with those sounds that I made for the intro you can see that here it's 34%, 35%, 52% so this area usually gives me very pleasant results. And one setting that is even more beautiful is the stereo setting because here you can use some stereo spread which means right now we have this kind of mono sound and like this you get the nice kind of pleasant distribution throughout the stereo field. Again be careful you can overdo it but it points out the drift even more and in an even nicer way so it's really worth playing with the relationship between those two parameters. And just to show you what kind of effect it can have I have some example here of the intro with stereo and drift and without stereo and drift and it's like three voices and you can hear quite nicely what it can do to the sound and how it changes and how it just sounds more vivid. By the way, if you like this video and would also like to support the channel, you can take a quick second to click the like button. Thanks. There are two other modes. For example, one is the mono mode, which means you can only play one note at a time. So if I play one note, you'll see as soon as I play the second one, the first one gets cut off. Although I'm still pressing two notes. And it's amazing for bass sounds or lead sounds. We just don't want to have some overlap that can quickly be unpleasant. And you can also make this really thick. So if you put it on 100%, I think it's like a four voice monophony. So it's like some fat synth. Which sounds really massive. And yeah, you have other stages in between. Cool little knob for making your sound fatter. And also you have unison detune which is also some very particular mode because it makes your sound more detuned but you can still have polyphony. So here it's again on 32 voices for example and you get crazy out of tune sounds. And again I really like using it here now with the envelope setting it's not perfect but you see what it can do and it's particularly amazing for massive pads or also some lead sounds that can sound really massive with the unison detune. And now we can get into the modulations because I didn't speak about the LFO yet. LFO means low frequency oscillator and is something if you don't apply it anywhere you don't hear it and you have to apply it. So for example here under pitch modulation you see a button for LFO and if I increase this amount here 
we hear that something happens and it's some modulation that happens to the pitch based on the rate of the LFO. And you can explore with this by yourself, but a typical setting that usually always sounds good is to put the rate at around like 6 hertz. There are other modes as well, I'll get into in a second. And usually lower the amount, otherwise it's just too strong. And if then you apply it to the pitch, you get something called vibrato that you maybe know from other effects or other musical situations. <laughs> which at this amount can give a very warm touch to the sound. And all the time you see some modulation window next to something, you can just apply, for example, some LFO. So I could do it here as well. And here I would modulate this, the shape. So the sawtooth wave would, mer would kind of morph between different positions. Which can actually also create super cool effects. But the LFO is not the only thing you can use for modulations. You can also use the envelope like we did with the filter. Also you can use the keyboard tracking that I explained here for the filter. It works then exactly the same that the higher you play the higher the value for in this case the shape would be. You can also use the velocity. It means like how loud you, you press the keys or how hard. You can use your mod wheel. You can also use after touch. And I think slide refers to some vertical fader like the opposite of the mod wheel but honestly I don't really know how this works. Maybe you know, let me know in the comments. And now you could also use the second envelope for modulations because we haven't used this one yet and here you can see by default it's already selected. And a typical thing for example is to have a very snappy envelope applied to the pitch and this way you get like percussive sounds. <laughs> or at least can add some percussive touch to your sound. But if you press this button here, you can also use a loop envelope, which is super fun. So you can make it rhythmical. So let's say you want 16th notes. And now it's basically like some LFO that you sync to the time because you can also sync the LFO to the clock of your song. And we chose Hertz, but you can also sync it. So it could be running in 16th notes and you have some rhythmical effects. And you can also use this second envelope. And here you have a little more options than with the LFO because you can shape the sound. So if I press now, actually it's not a good example to do it with a pitch. Let's do it with the envelope. So uh, with, the, with the filter. So now you see we apply this to the filter. You would call this uh, tremolo. And you can fine tune. Like this, it's really punchy. This is a bit more psychedelic. You can also have them hold. So there's only a tiny bit of motion in the beginning, otherwise it's kind of running through. And if some modulation you'd like to do is not available on the main screen, you can also go to modulation here and have three more options for applying something to something that is maybe not visible here yet. So this is also sweet if you have the idea of maybe doing something to the noise, maybe modulating the noise with, in this case, some LFO or also envelope 2, you could do it here. I want to show you two more things that in my opinion are super fun about the synth and also go into the direction of how you can make the sound more personal and play with the character of the synth. And I want to show you a sound from the intro. So there's a string sound. It's kind of a th string sound with a lot of noise. So uh, it sounds a bit broken. Let's listen to it in solo. And you can see that I'm sending the volume of os oscillator 1 with full amount into the filter. And the filter is modeled like some analog filter, which means it, re it reacts to the volume of the oscillator. And you can get different types of saturation effects. So if I, for example, have the same sound, but in this case, everything is like 10 dB lower, but I compensate it with the volume. So they are at the same volume and the filter frequency setting is the same. You get some more mellow tone. So let's actually compare. There's once more the kind of saturated version. Now the less saturated version.
You get those additional overtones that come through saturating the filter and it's a kind of subtle thing but I find it really cool to just play with the relationship between filter frequency, resonance, also filter type and the oscillator volume because there you can also in addition to all the other settings create some cool tones. And there's another fun thing I use here because you can see the keyboard tracking is all the way to the max and also the resonance is cranked up to the max which means I can deselect the oscillators and still get some sound out of the filter due to the keyboard tracking and the resonance. So you can actually create tones without oscillators. And depending on where you put the frequency you get those different tones. Of course if you merge it with oscillators you have to see where it is in tune but Super cool timbres you can get this way. And another thing I want to show you is that you can also change the LFO from hertz or something rhythmical, also milliseconds, to audio rate, which is this one on one. And there's another synthesis principle that is called FM synthesis, frequency modulation, where you change the timbre of some oscillator through modulating it with another oscillator. And this is super fun because this means on full numbers you always get results in tune because you don't have to understand the whole principle but if I now increase the amount of LFO one, we also change the timbre and if I put this to higher numbers it gets even more interesting And again, if, you, if you're not on some, on some regular number and somewhere in between, you get out of tune effects. But if you again bring them in tune, this is like amazing and super fun. So this is something I definitely encourage you to explore. And you can also do it with this rhythmical envelope. It sounds different because it doesn't move continuously as the LFO does. But yeah, those one-on-one -on -one settings are another chance for creating super amazing timbres. And all the time it's just a few tweaks because you can't get too lost inside the whole synthesizer. If you're interested in playing around with those three patches that I made and you heard in the intro, you can download them for free. There's a link down below in the description and also there are more links down below in the description that could be interesting to you in case you like this video. Here's also another sound design tutorial, but it's with analog in Ableton, but in case you have the synth as well, it's the next nice one to learn in my opinion. And apart from that, I wish you lots of inspiration with whatever it is that you create and hope to see you soon again at this channel. Bye.